stay at it here. What's up, y'all? What's up, Lolo? How's everyone doing? Who's first trader therapy is this? If it's your first trader th therapy, let me know in chat. Sweet. Well, in that case, um, let me let you know, first of all, what this is all about. Trader therapy is not, oh God, endo. I should, normally I don't have charts up even, right? I try not to. Okay. Normally I try not to have charts up. There's are, there are no charts ever, right? It's a, uh, this is a psychological session. Generally speaking, this is a chance for us to, for me first, and you'll see, I'll lead by example to kind of get off our chest, what we're struggling with most. And, 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 and it has everything to do with anything but charts, right? So if you're saying, oh, I'm getting stopped out or you're talking about strategy, I don't care. Unless it has to do specifically with psychology, don't care that much about it, all right? Um, what we're trying to do is get to root causes of psychological issues that we have as traders and that we're gonna continuously go through, whether it be fear of pulling the trigger, right? You see your setup and then it goes without you, all right? I get that. Um, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're a gunslinger, man, and you need to reel in on it, right? I get that too. You've been revenge trading for a week, anything, right? Big drawdowns. There's so many things that it can be. Um, but that's what we're, that's what we're here to speak about. Right. And try to get to root. Like I said, the root cause, <clears throat> what you're going to find if you're new with me is that I have a couple trains of thought, which is psychology is everything and psychology is nothing. What do I mean by that? Well, when you get to a certain level where you're able to manage risk, you have a playbook full of plays, right? You understand the markets and adaptation and, and all the different elements that are going into your trading. You have a process, in other words, a profitable process in particular. Then yes, okay, if I'm struggling, generally speaking, a large portion of that is going to be psychological. But if you're Billy, if you're buying through highs, if you're chasing, if you're impulse buying, if you're, if you don't understand risk reward, if you have no semblance of process, if you're just buying highs, chasing breakouts, right? Well, we've already spoken about this many, many times, but it is impossible to not impossible, but it is very, very improbable that you like you are special and are going to be your trading psychology is going to be over, be able to overcome the market psychology behind the move, right? So, so in other words, if you're buying in the wrong spots, trading psychology does not mean shit. Does that makes sense. Let me know in chat. So that's the first thing. Honestly, I find if I can help y'all get better entries, better entry ideas and exit ideas first, holy shit. You're like, wow. All I'm, I promise 90% of the psychological shit that you deal with every day and you think are your problems go away. They go away. Does that make sense? Please let me know in chat. It's big time. Top right corner. Chat in the top right corner, please. <clears throat> it's a big deal. First, before you start fixing your psychology, fix your entries fix your trade strategies and setups. All right. Find areas where it's not so schizophrenic, where I don't have every short and their mother shorting and every long and their mother trying to buy it through the highs only to have some asshole with millions of shares stuff the move and then prop it and stuff it and prop it. Right. When you could have been making money both ways, technically, if you're doing the right things. Okay. So that's a big deal to me. All right. It's a huge, huge deal to me that no matter what I feel like I'm going through psychologically, if I don't have a playbook, if I don't have a setup or a, a group of setups, I don't know how they ebb in and out of flow, how they flow in and out into the markets. Um, 
I don't understand the macros behind what's going on. If I don't understand how they're dumping and all that good stuff, nothing means anything y'all. Right? So that is the whole point. First, we got to fix that. I, you know, you're going to find yourself having to, if you at least start to put yourself in better areas, be more patient because the trades work longer. Maybe not as fast as like, it's going up and you bought it. It's still going up. Oh my God. Right? No, it's not like that, but it's like, it's going up. I took out some off into price target one. Now it's pulling back because shorts have stepped in. There's also Billy's still holding his bag and, you know, from the morning and it's got to have ebbs and flows. Oh, look, price target two. Take some shares off. Okay. That's how, that's literally the self speak for me and my, a lot of my students who, who is a student of mine in here? Who's an alpha and can attest to that. It's kind of what the self speak is in their head. It's not, oh my God, it's going up. Oh, it's going through my day. Oh, oh, I'm in. Oh, it's 10 cents. I didn't get in. Oh, I'm still fucking in, right? Oh, I'm up a little bit more. I'm making money. Oh my God, what the fuck just happened? I'm down. Fuck. Oh no. What do I do? Uh, oh, I'm going to add some more down here. I don't know, <laughs> right? The self-speak. <laughs> I get it. I've been, and the only reason I know that voice so intimately more than my wife's voice is from trading is from trading that way for a long time and for and you know what that is surge of dopamine that is what y'all are chasing every day and gets you keep come keep, keeps you coming back which is a good thing but what you're going to find is that it ends up being super it works against everything we're trying to actually do as traders right that's not how my trades sound anymore right so you're going to find naturally through entry exit ideas um very much so the ability to um control your emotions much better okay much much better that being said let me let me kick us off all right let me kick us off i've been struggling since my dad died still right so since mid January, I've been just struggling. Um, I've had a lot of one on ones recently, which has been literally pulling me out of this kind of funk that I've been in. Okay, same with this free mentorship program, it was designed y'all more for me than for you. It just so happens that I'm hoping to be able to do a lot of good for a lot of people along the way. But it's also been designed to coax me out of this depression and, and making content for everybody again and teaching and trading heavily. Okay, so that, so like literally it get, it cuts deep, man, you know, um, the, um, the psychological stuff again, especially once you have process and the beautiful part is I already know, damn it, TPET too. I already know, um, in my heart, because I've been through this, especially in this market, all I have to do is stick to process, start trading again. That's all I got to do. Um, and things will work themselves out, which is what you're going to see me doing over the rest of the month and for the rest of the year, which is just put on risk. You know, that's it. Put on risk. Grow this small account. Grow my big account. Feed my family. Okay. Um, in an amazing environment. Uh, you know, um, I'm a little, I'm slightly distracted right now because we have a sector going. So I'm, I'm slightly distracted. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, I'm just, I don't have charts up, like I said, but I need to just kind of keep an eye on energy plays and, um, especially with Indo urging at the moment but i'll do my best we actually so we only have shit we only have uh 30 more minutes so i'm gonna cut to the chase okay i'm gonna cut to the chase we are gonna do one more free pre-market one more free trader therapy next week a full sesh right because unfortunately um yes oil yes oil yes oil um it's you know these things could fucking gap stick next week if shit goes down over the weekend which i don't want it to you know Personally, I don't want the sector to run. I don't want war in the Middle East right now. Personally, I have family, like I said, in Israel and stuff. Um, it just, you know, I just don't, uh, I don't want war over the weekend. You know, even if it, there's a trade there, um, I don't mind if, if oil surges over the weekend and gives me some trades. Anyways, I diverge. That's what I'm struggling with right now. So all you're seeing me do is size down, press buttons. I already know what to do. Size down, take every setup I see you're, is what you're going to see me do next week. It's my plan. Every setup that I see that I, that, and that's A, B, or C, right? If it's just dog shit, I'm not doing it. But any A, B, C setup, I am putting on risk next week, period. Right? And I'm going to trade him live, and I'm going to kick fucking ass again. That's my goal. 
Um, the one-on-ones, you know, y'all give me a lot of life, man. This pack, my pack, my alphas, y'all who've been just supporting me over the last three months. Fuck, dude. Y'all give me a lot of life. You know what I mean? So. What did I say? Didn't I say I digress? Anyways. I diverged. Eh, I did also diverge. Uh, and I, but both. Um, but thanks for the grammar lesson, you bitch. <laughs> uh, I love you. All right. Always have. Um, so for me, I'm honestly, I'm in the best place psychologically I've been since January, my friends. Okay. Working one-on-one -on -one with you, getting back out here, trading again. It feels fucking phenomenal to me. So, so that's where I'm at. Let's move on to you. Let's start working with y'all. Okay. Start working with y'all. I could get deeper. I could get deeper. I could get deeper into what's going on with me right now, but I don't have time, you know, and I, and I feel, and I have in the last few trader therapies anyways, and I'm working my way out of that funk. So I'm feeling pretty fucking good. Let's go five minute hard timer, tan man, hard timer. So you guys have like a minute to get your issue to me on this side. Again, next week we'll do a full sesh this week. Quick sesh. Because I have to go probably have a doctor feel my balls. Good times. They're going to take my blood, feel my balls, and hopefully stick a finger in my booty. <laughs> sorry. Wonderful. I'm sorry. <laughs> like a good date would. I'm getting old. That, just to Big give right, you guys, you to give, stuff, put some perspective man. there for you guys about my age. I, I might look kind of young, but that's only because I'm Asian. And I haven't been doing uh, crack like Anthony Kim for the last two months or whatever. Two years, 10 years, 15 years. Sup, sup. What we got? Who's first? Just waiting for Big Ride to hit accept. We're going to have to move on. Hey, if, if you're, uh, hey, if you accept. are, there we go. If you're one of my lifetime members who I just like spoke with you one on one this week, oh, you can get up. I don't care. Whatever. If there's no one else, but let's try mm -hmm. to let, like, uh, you know, the people who don't ever get to talk to me chat. Hey, <clears throat> hey, Roland. What's up, big dog? <clears throat> um, kind of what I wanted to talk about today is I've, my strength of my training has been cutting losses and I've, uh, today, this week I've had a couple small losses this week. And then today I had a really good trade that wiped out all those losses. So I had a really great day today, but when I was looking at the losses, I was noticing that um, some of them just didn't quite get to the price target one and then reversed. And I could have had like a two to one risk reward or one and a half risk reward and didn't take the, the didn't take the profits, but it could, because it didn't get to that first target. And I'm just kind of, it's messing with me mentally because like when it gets below to my, where I cut, I'm doing great at cutting, but it's, I guess if it doesn't get to my first target is where I kind of struggle. I get the first target and the second target and all that, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I've, I'm doing pretty good about buying off of lows. Like my entries have been pretty solid, but it's my exits I'm kind of struggling with today. Like I said, today I had a good winner that wiped out all those losses. So I'm keeping them small, but they're still kind of nagging me, I guess, in a way. I got you, bro. That's what I'm struggling with. I got you. I would take heart straight in the fact that um, that risk reward ratios overall are intact. You know what I mean? And, and this goes for a lot of you, bro. It's uh. It's one trade, it's one week, it's one day. You know what I'm saying? It's just another day. And and there are ebbs and flows. We're not always going to perform perfectly. I don't. You know, you guys get that's why I trade every fucking day for you so that you can see me not trade perfectly. You can see me not trade for weeks like being all fucked up in my mind like anyone can. You'll see and then you get to see weeks where I'm over trading. You get to see all the good, bad and in between and that is trading, man. And all we're trying to do is tweak it so that we perform better. But you are not alone, my friend, in the price target thing, okay? Generally speaking, we're not getting price targets. We're in a fader or we're just, we got in front of something a little too early. That can happen. That's going to happen, you guys. If you're dip buying, there are times, how many times are you going to be dip buying an all-day fader, right? There are a lot of times you're going to be dip buying all-day faders, but there can still be 
decent enough reward there for you that's the whole point behind it even if it even if it doesn't get through high a day pre-market highs and then rip buttholes all day and then gap up tomorrow there's still money to be made on these things right so uh so in other words first of all big picture perspective not the biggest deal like a lot of you a lot of you get so hung up in one trade or in one week or in one month of trading um and you get so down on yourself that it starts to affect your trading right it's like it's just not that right it's not that we're always going to be somewhere in between good trading and bad trading in terms of our standards we're always going to be somewhere in between a good market and a bad market in terms of overall markets we're always going to be somewhere in between our set of us being there and not being there you know there's the ebbs and flows so so in that aspect what i try to do is if i find that i'm not hitting price targets well i have to look at entries again so um what are the tickers I've been trading? When am I dip buying it? What time of day? Has there been, you know, what has the range looked like? But I struggle as well when price targets are not when I like, generally speaking, we get our PT ones and stuff like that. If you're getting PT one and you're getting your first price target, you're taking some off. That's, you know, that's all great. That's what we live for. And that's when the trades start working. If it's, I'm not getting the price target one, the, there's only two ways to adjust, which is adjust entry. So like I have to either, reduce my frequency of trading, find a better spot to enter, or I have to get more scalpy, right? So what I tend to do, what I tend to do, because it may mean we're in an all day fader market for now, this week, today, tomorrow, we don't know how long an all day fader market lasts, right? In terms of all the gappers are just basically fading in general, right? So that to me is a big deal. What I'll do is get more scalpy. That's what even what I've been trying to do lately with my mentality is, you know what, I'm gonna take my PT1 and cut that bitch in half right and i'm gonna get one to one or one to two on my first shares inevitably it's not going to be as good but as opposed to stop out stop out stop out stop out which gets very frustrating i'll keep the needle pushing forward do you know what i'm trying to say just understand you're in, yeah. like maybe it's a it's a decent setup it's an a or b setup but you're in a c or d market right now so it's like okay i have to i just have to adjust right my friend and that and that's all it takes that's all it really takes and then guess what happens guess what happens my i start i it's perspective right so i'm changing perspective so i've reduced perspective i've reduced expectation big time as a rule of thumb across all my setups and then i start saying oh fuck i sold it too early oh fuck i sold it too early <laughs> two times if i say i've sold it too early twice and and i use i use this rule of two y'all across so much, across so many different things with like strategies, setups for adaptation. I don't wanna be, I don't want to be caught in a five day, 10 day drawdown because I'm going back to a pattern that's not worked. You know what I'm trying to say? So in other words, it didn't work twice, didn't work three times, like twice, I lay off the pattern until I see it work. If it works twice, if something works twice, that's a pattern to me. I'm gonna hit it the third time it pops up. What's, and what's amazing about this, and what I'm trying to get y'all to do, I, you know, a lot of you are going to get paralyzed to trade once you realize all the dangers that are around and all the bad shit that there is. That's good. That's part of the set. That is natural. Like, oh my God, I've been trading all this bullshit. I got to not trade anything. That's natural. And then it's about, okay, now what do I trade? Right? So um, that's the, that for you, my friend, you know, we've spoken several times. That would be, I keep it super simple, bro. Super simple. Take PT ones, cut them in half until we start hitting PT ones again. Don't, you don't really need to change too much okay. else unless you're still and still as you're still getting stopped out a ton um so you're going in a scalp protection singles mentality right now in other words keep the needle moving forward okay until you see the opportunities it's there all... so we're being creative in other words right with what we're doing yeah and adapting gotcha awesome thank you thanks buddy that's all i got jamon who we got I only have a few more minutes, 15 to be exact. I can't miss this uh, price target one. I'm sorry, price target. PT one is just price target one, okay? I like to have an idea of where I wanna sell my shares. And I like to have multiple targets and I like to sell into them. And that's been, a di that's been something that's different, okay? Uh, if you, like if you watch the old guide, which we're gonna be dropping some chapters of that too to you all uh, this week and for the weekend, um, I mentioned how that's not a part of my process is price targets, right? 
And a big reason I didn't have price targets because Tim Gratani didn't really, but he actually did if you, if you talk to him and then get into what he was thinking. So what's up, Stefano? Hi, Roland. Can you hear me? I got you, bro. Um, first of all, I wasn't planning on uh, doing uh, trading therapy today, but my trading buddy, Rick D, also another of your Wolf's traders, yes. he recommended it after we had a chit chat. So I'm glad that I am here to share with you. Uh, I've been struggling with, um, first of all, I, I appreciate you sharing about the internal dialogue, how we get into the dopamine state. What should I do? It's not working. Uh, should I cut it or should I add? And I not only identify, I find myself in that mental trap many times. Instead of cutting, and my plan was to cut, I, I add, I add to, to losers. Um, there is a fader that in my head has to bounce, has to bounce. I become so biased. I will do the whole process research on why this fader has to bounce. <laughs> then it doesn't bounce. Instead of cutting, I add more shares. Bro. And by the time I do cut it, I take a loss that's way bigger than I anticipated. Yeah. Oh, bro. I Much gotcha. bigger for the size mm. of my account. Mm -hmm. So I could have uh, three profitable months, and I'm very happy. I feel very good about myself. And then I, I find myself in this one state where one big loss wipes away all of the diligent trades where I was taking singles, take singles, take singles, and my mom looks green and I'm so happy. I can prove to my wife that I can do this. Totally, bro. And when I take those huge losses, not only it affects mm. my account, it also affects my confidence, everything, my self-esteem. And uh, when I hear other people uh, celebrating huge wins, I can't help it. I feel jealous. Yeah, you know? bro. I get I, you. I almost resent mm, them because they dude. can do something that I cannot do. Mm -hmm. And my problem, I think it is. Me I too, take it by too the way. Personal. That's natural. I take it way too personal. For me, being in a winning trade represents status, power. Um, I matter. I'm... I'm as good as the big guys. Then when uh, it doesn't work out and it's time to cut it, then I'm a loser. Oh, bro. Then there's something wrong yeah, with me. Yeah. It becomes a very, very, and I know those are false messages, but so I false. think it's too yeah, but yeah, seriously they're real. Too, too personal and it's hard to detach. Gotcha. Um, dude, first of all, you're so not alone. We all go through this, man. <laughs> Before trading, I was a drug addict for a while. Well, I was a professional soccer player, but then after that, that life was done. I was a drug addict, heroin specifically, opiates. I got hooked on pain meds after hurting my ankle, playing soccer and stuff, you know? Bottom of the barrel, bro, homeless. Um, I get it. All wow. I hear is ego, 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 ego. It's this, what you want to show to the world, like what you want to show to your wife, like all the things that at the end of the day don't mean shit to the markets. You know what I mean? It means nothing. All that matters is our performance, man. Winning and losing. So you've already come to this conclusion. The fact that you can have three good months in a row, some people don't even get that first off, all right? Some people don't ever have that. Some people have never had, some people have their first like two green days in a row, right? So that's a big deal. Don't, don't write that off, bro. Second of all, second of all they never have to bounce. This is the most important thing you can ever, ever, ever teach yourself about small cap is they don't have to bounce. And the second you are, you are trying to figure out why they should bounce, you're fucked, right? The second you are, and it, it's funny, and I, I've been there, right? You're like long, it's not working, you're doing DD. <laughs> For some reason, you're not trying to figure out how to get out of this piece of shit. You're trying to figure out how to add to it or be in it more. And it's um because, and uh, you know what? That's probably worked for you several times in the past, okay? It's probably bailed out and you've probably hit like a, a third day surge pattern or like a 
first green day bounce pattern and then gotten bailed out and that has reinforced this thing that you can do once in a while to bail yourself out of stupid positions we can never do it and i've done it so many times and i will continuously as long as i trade once in a while do dumb things like that right the key is what you do after the one thing that you don't do is add to that position that's the one the only thing that i can do once i <laughs> once I am wondering why and how it needs to bounce. I'm fucked, first of all, because now we're not in my plan anymore, right? I didn't have plans for this. Now I'm trying to figure some shit out. Those trades are my worst trades, have always been my worst trades, will always be my worst trades, okay? Sure, you can get bailed out once in a while, but the only time I get bailed out now is because what I will do is set a risk level, okay? Now, maybe I don't panic out here, but let's be fucking reasonable about this, right? Where, do, where is, uh, like... I also don't want to be stopped out at the dead bottom, okay? So, so there's a funny dynamic there. That's what you have to ask yourself. Do I tear the Band-Aid off of this piece of shit that I, I unfortunately somewhat bagged on is what, is what it ends up being? If you, I consider being bagged anytime I, my, my risk is breached and I didn't cut it, right? Um, that's technically bagged, and then I'm, I'm working some sort of different plan. I might, I'm like not trading well, okay? Um, that being said, you got to figure it out at that point. What do we wait for in situations like that? We wait for the price to come back up so we can get our money back so we don't feel like a loser. Okay, this is, this is the most important thing that you guys can all get through if you're new, is that a good loss, just as good as a good win. A good cut, where I have cut through my risk level, at the risk level, and I've minimized my loss to the best of my ability. It has not slipped beyond my risk level. It has not, I have not lost one more dollar than I intended to lose on this trade. It's a perfect trade. It's perfect. The loss, it's a perfect loss. You wanna be good at trading, get good at losing. Get good at losing as small as you can every time. Every time, bro, right? You do that, you understand that they don't have to bounce and when you inevitably fuck up, you have to control it, not add to it and let it wipe out your last three months. Bro, I bet you didn't add. You don't do this. You don't do that. It doesn't wipe out your last three months. It wipes out your last few weeks, right? It wipes out your last week. Okay, that's fine, dude. That's forgivable. But wipe out all your work. That's when you feel like a piece of shit. And I get it, dude. I will still feel shitty if that happens to me. And it's not because of what people think anymore. I don't give a fuck what people think. And you're going to realize that too over time. You know, guess what? Your wives, your girlfriends, your peers. Um, yeah, they're all kind of dogging you, but they're really not caring too much. And when you start making money, they're not going to care that much either. You know, and it, like they'll be happy for you or whatever, but it doesn't, it's not like, there's not like a gigantic shift in the opinion of people just because you're good at trading. The people in your, in your life, okay? I promise. It's the opposite. My wife treats me more like shit. <laughs> she treats me like I play video games all fucking day. She'd treat me better if I built houses for a living every day. Seriously, bro. I, I, I truly believe that. She thinks I'm just hanging out with my friends all day, which I am. <laughs> right? That's funny. That's very funny. Bro, get so good at losing. Get so good at losing. Two things. Get so good at losing. They don't have to bounce ever. They don't ever have to bounce. In fact, most of the time they're not. I assume they're not bouncing. All right. Thank you so much. My bro. friend. Good speaking it. with you. Tell Rick I said what's up. It's my boy. Thank you. Cool. What else we got? I got room for time for literally one more, y'all. Sorry. And then I got a bail. And we're gonna, but we'll do one more next week, next Friday. Like normally I, I run these for like an hour and a half to two hours generally. And I talk until the last person is done fucking asking me questions. So that's how I roll. I love it, D. I love that. That's so cool. Can, I, can listen, if, my, little... if I could get my wife to trade profitably, yeah, I would be down to just not trade anymore. <laughs> All right. Last, last speaker, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see me or not, but I can see you can hear me, correct? We can't. We can hear you, though. That's fine. All right. Well, I've been doing this for about two years now, Roland, and I was in a group for a year and uh, I was doing fine, but he switched to options and with the small account, I'm not going to do options. And I have learned watching you. I watched your stuff from five years ago, way before you came back, all of it. And uh, I, was ch I was chasing, trying to buy the rips and anticipate and anticipate the 
the um, breakouts and it cost me. I blew two small accounts, which, you know, it happens. Um, join the other 90%, right? But I have always wanted to learn how to find support at the bottom. And your style is what I've been looking for. And I'm finally in the right place. I know that. And I've got a great system. I've been in free chat a while and uh, everyone in free chat knows that I scrapped my entire system after finding you and set up one night and just built an entire, rebuilt an entire trading system. I and fucking love that. I love that. Doing yeah. really well with that. But my issue is trying to grow a small account. Mm. I guess trying to grow it too fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't take profits mm. because I know that under the PT rule, I've got three, uh, yeah, three day three, trades. Three buys, three sales, and five days. Oh, yeah. Round gotcha. trip with OTS. If I with think or swim, if I sell once, that's done. So I can't scale out. I have to go all out or Ooh, change brokers. Rule, and that's that's Dude, the issue. Change brokers, uh, or Hold exactly me. what House EZ said. Maybe a cash account. I'm tra my three thousand dollar account, buddy, is a cash account specifically for that reason so i don't have to worry about pdt i don't have to worry uh you know for now i think in a few months by the way they're changing it to t plus one so it's going to settle in one day so it literally will make no sense to be under pdt like to have a margin account unless you have three thousand dollars and you want to use or five or one or two or whatever and you want to use all of that capital every trade or any trade right and even then even then if you have and it's funny that because I haven't had answers to questions like this because I haven't been trading under PD. Like I haven't traded a small, small account for a long time. But um, I'm really enjoying the cash account right now. To be honest, I'm really, really enjoying the fact that I don't have to worry about PDT and that it's actually limiting what I can do. But, you know, I'm still limited, right? So in other words, if I want multiple day trades for today, tomorrow, and the next day, I can only use small portions of my account because I'm not going to have that. For now, that money's not available for two more days, right? So for example, I placed a $700 position size trade yesterday. I lost 20 bucks or whatever. And so today I only have, um, you know, like 22 or 2100, whatever it is to use, but I can use it, right? I could place five day trades today, 10 day trades, as long as I'm just within my cash realm. Does that make sense? So for me, I'm actually really enjoying the cash account. If you can't, if, if you can't uh, size out, I would, I would, uh, I'd switch, right? I'd switch, I'd switch brokers, right, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do something. I've got an account with Trade Zero as my second account to go back and forth, but it's still the same. It's, I can scale in all I want, but to scale out counts as an entire mm. round trip. And that yep. sucks. Yeah, that's, dude. It, that, so, whole... so these are the cool thing is, is that's a psychological, physical problem that you can just, you can remedy by moving money or going to cash. Yeah. I, I promise you either, either of those will help tremendously. I, I would, I could not be in a broker that wouldn't let me size out if under PDT. Okay. That, yeah, that to me is one of those non nego right dude, that to me is a non-negotiable. I can trade easily with one entry, multiple exits. I can't trade as easily with multiple entries in one exit or the, the inability to size out. In other words, my, my entries are generally speaking only one or two buys anyways, because I'm going to be calculating risk and I'm going to have one or two spots where I want to add shares to get the average that I want. And that's it. And then the rest of that, the rest of beyond that, I need to be able to sell at any level that I want to sell at any time. You know, and I need to be I'm able to size out, dude, for all of you a bit. And this is a psychological hack for me is sizing out is the fact that I'd rather have a thousand shares at a dollar sell a hundred at 10 cents, a hundred at 30 cents, a hundred at a buck 50, then sell it all at a buck 10 and then not have any left and have to try to rebuy it higher based on like, you know, without good risk reward in yeah. other words. So when I'm, when I'm practicing, when I'm practicing your trade management style and scaling out, I mm. do really well. But when I have totally to hold, knowing I've got one cell, yeah, even paper trading. Oh, I feel you, bro. Green to red. I feel you a hundred percent. So th th those are the kinds of things y'all where you can immediately change, right? You can immediately fix certain issues like that, but it's also easy to just kind of like be stuck in a broker and you're just show up every day and do things. So my advice is make moves, right? Just make moves. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for rolling. And thanks Tanner for all y'all do for us. We appreciate the time you spend.
Hey, Keep man. Absolutely. Program. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Hey, uh, what we got? We got, um, I got to go to this doctor's appointment, but House EZ said uh, former BU soccer guy here. When? Like Boston U? Oh, nine. Nice, bro. Fuck yeah, dude. Holler at me. Um, I was just out there. I was just out at Nickerson for the first time in like a long time, bro. Um, I went to a couple of my buddies, ran a boot camp in Boston last year. And so that's cool. I'm trying to think of who I know from class of 09. I was 04. So it's a little bit after, but what a trip, man. Who was it? You, I mean, that, that still would have been Neil Roberts, huh? Mignona, you know, Migs. That's my boy, dude. That's cool. Hey, DM me, bro. DM me. Holler at me. Um, all right, my friends, I got a roll. Thanks for joining me. I got to get to the dock. Um, but we're getting more video lessons out to you. We're getting chapters of the guide out to you today. We're getting a bunch of shit to you for, to study over the weekend. So I can get some better, you know, not so sh such noob ass questions next week. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then we'll run a proper trader therapy next Friday too. All right. Everyone have a great weekend. Get to work. We'll get some stuff up for you. Thank you for joining me this week. I hope you guys are learning some stuff um, that will push you forward one way or another. Love you all. Stay safe. Catch you on Monday.